The book of the Apocalypse establishes in the first chapter that angels can represent stars. Revelation chapter 1 verse 20 talks about the mystery of the seven stars, and it says the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. This establishes that stars can represent angels, and if stars are angels, then angels are stars. So in Revelation 18, where it says an angel cast a great stone into the sea, it's also saying a star cast a stone into the sea. This is very important because Revelation chapter 12 tells us the great red dragon is the one who casts the stars to the earth with its tail. So the prophecy is clear that the cause of the asteroid hitting the sea is a red star that also has a tail. The riddle of the seven stars is a Bible code that also connects to this prophecy of the apocalyptic meteorite. We covered this in another video. In the books of Amos and Job, the seven stars are associated with wormwood. The book of Revelation explains in chapter 8 that wormwood is a burning star that will fall to earth in the end time. It says, There fell a great star from heaven, burning, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and fountains, and the name of the star is Wormwood. This, it says, is what causes the sun, moon, and stars to go dark. In the next chapter, Revelation 9, it explains more specifically that the darkness will be caused by this falling star. It says, A star fell from heaven unto the earth, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. That star, it says in chapter 8, is named Wormwood, and it is a burning stone, as both Revelation 18 and the book of Daniel clarify. Wormwood is also mentioned in the books of Amos and Job, which are also the same books that the seven stars are mentioned. So there's a connection in Bible prophecy between the seven stars and Wormwood. In Amos 5 verses 7 and 8, the King James translation says, Ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion, and turn the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. The King James translation doesn't make a whole lot of sense here, but when we look closer at the meanings of the original Hebrew words, we discover what it's really saying. The phrase in verse 7 that is translated as turn judgment, words 2015 and 4941, also mean change time. So this can also say, ye who change the time of wormwood, and word 3240 and word 6666, which also mean make quiet truthfulness. So verse 7 can also read, Ye who change the time of wormwood and make quiet truthfulness in the earth. And in verse 8, the phrase, Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion, can also be translated, Seek him that pass the seven stars and Orion. The word translated as make, number 6213, also means pass. So, seek him that passes the seven stars and Orion. And when we look at the word translated as seven stars, number 3598, we can see that it also means Pleiades. In Job 9, verse 9, the same word, number 3598, is translated in the King James Bible as Pleiades. The Pleiades are a star system consisting of seven stars, which is located in the constellation Taurus, and Taurus is next to Orion. So it makes perfect sense that Amos is saying, Seek him that passes the Pleiades and Orion. In other words, the celestial object that passes Orion and Taurus. 
And again, in Job 9, the context is talking about something that moves the mountains, shakes the earth, and makes the sun and stars go dark. The meteorite that is going to hit the earth is called Wormwood, and we are told this somehow relates to the constellations Orion and the Bear, the Star Arcturus, and the Pleiades star system. Amos 5 says, You who change the time of wormwood and make quiet truthfulness in the earth. So it's talking about someone who changed the time of wormwood. In other words, somebody lied about the timing of the arrival of the meteorite. So it's talking about the cover-up of the truth. They changed the timing somehow. But there's something else very important in Amos and Job. Both Job and Amos are referencing Wormwood, and they're both talking about the sun going dark, the waves, the mountains moving, and the earth shaking. Revelation tells us that at that event, the meteorite impact, there will be a great earthquake. It says the mountains will be moved and the islands will not be found. Jeremiah tells us the waves will cover Babylon, and Revelation tells us that is because the stone from heaven will hit the sea of Babylon. It also says the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard when this event happens. So there's no doubt that both Amos and Job are referencing the coming asteroid impact when they mention Wormwood. They are definitely talking about Wormwood, the burning stone or star that is going to hit the earth. But this is where it goes deeper because Job and Amos are giving us the orbit of this celestial object. It says he passes the Pleiades, Orion, Arcturus, and the Bear constellation. It's talking about a celestial object. It says in Job, Lo, he goeth by me, and I see him not. He passeth on, but I perceive him not. This tells us that the object is not visible. So again, we're told very clearly that the end of our civilization will be caused by a giant meteorite that will hit the earth, a fiery burning stone that will be cast to the earth by a star, that is a great red dragon with a tail that is not visible to the human eye. This is extremely important because scientists have been discussing this invisible star for decades, and maybe longer. The chief astronomer of the Naval Observatory published a scientific paper in 1988 explaining why he thought Planet X may be located in either the constellation Taurus or the constellation Scorpio. The Bible tells us the object passes both Orion and the Pleiades, which are in Taurus. So it seems that whoever wrote these ancient texts had a better handle on our solar system than our scientists do because Robert Harrington was put to shame for coming out with that statement. So they don't understand. Either that or they're just flat-out liars. NASA continuously belittles anyone who suggests that there may be a giant celestial object in the outer solar system. But independent scientists keep announcing new discoveries about that object. Some say it's a brown or red dwarf star that can only be seen with an infrared telescope. We won't be getting into their science in this video, but only to show that this ancient book, the Bible, already knew of the existence of this object long before the Age of Reason even began. It tells us that the powers that be do know about this object and the asteroids and comets that it essentially tosses toward the inner solar system. The Bible tells us they know, and they are lying about the timing of it. And this is interesting because NASA and other agencies have made announcements about potentially harmful asteroids in recent years. But notice they always say it's not due to arrive until 2030 or some other distant future date that no one will be talking about once it arrives. The Bible knew about this object before they did. And the Bible is telling us they are lying about the timing of this object. 
In other words, they know when it will hit, and they've given us the warning, but they lied about when it will hit. The Bible also tells us who is lying about it. In Amos 5, it says Yahweh is his name. So it can be saying one of two different things here. It can either be saying, ye who changes the time of wormwood is Yahweh, or it can be saying, he who passes the seven stars and Orion is Yahweh. Well, the Bible tells us that the meteorite that's going to hit Earth is called wormwood. We also know that the book of Job is not talking about Yahweh in the context of wormwood. In Job 9, the original Hebrew word that was later translated as God is actually El not Yahweh. Job is telling us that El is what passes Arcturus, Orion, and the Pleiades. El is what will shake the earth out of her place and cause the sun and stars to go dark. So the Bible tells us the meteorite is wormwood, and the star that casts wormwood to the earth is apparently named El. This is important to understand because all Bible scholars know that the Hebrews were worshiping El long before the word Yahweh came into existence. The Bible itself tells us that God's name was not Yahweh, but El Shaddai. So if Wormwood is the name of the meteorite and El is the name of the star that will cast Wormwood to the earth, then Amos 5 must be saying that Yahweh is he who changes the time of Wormwood. And this makes perfect sense because Hosea 13 and Revelation 13 explain that Yahweh is the beast. Amos 5 is then telling us that the beast has changed the time of Wormwood. And this is important. The Bible tells us that the beast is both Yahweh and the United Nations. This means that Yahweh is the United Nations. It is a false god that was created by the beast. And we know that is a fact. The very first mention of the name Yahweh was discovered on a stone slab that is dated to the Babylonian Empire, which the Bible tells us was the first phase of the beast. Hosea tells us Yahweh is the beast to the tares. This means that the tares are not worshipping the Elohim. They are not worshipping the creators of the earth. They are worshiping a false god that was created by the beast. In fact, they are worshiping the beast itself because the beast put itself in God's place. Deuteronomy is clear that at the time of Babylon, when the name Yahweh first appeared, according to archaeological records, it says in that ancient text in Deuteronomy, it says, Publish the name Yahweh and ascribe to Yahweh the greatness of the Elohim. So again, this is not me saying it. It is the Bible telling us that Yahweh is not the true God. It is and has always been the beast. The name Yahweh was created by the empire. It belongs to the empire and it is is the empire. That is why the Bible says that the beast is the world government and the beast is Yahweh. Because the world empire and Yahweh are one and the same. I'm just going to say that again because I know this is difficult to absorb. I understand that. The empire created Yahweh. Yahweh is a false god. It does not exist. The Bible says the beast is the eighth king who is of the seven kings. That means the United Nations is the renewed Holy Roman Empire, which was also the Greek Empire, the Persian Empire, and the Babylonian Empire. They created the god Yahweh, the name They created 
the name Yahweh and ascribed it to the greatness of the Elohim, which is the true God. And they did that. They created that false God so that the people would worship them. They are the false God. All the way back to the Babylonian Empire, it's still going on now, the same thing. They created the false God so the people would worship the government unknowingly, thinking they were worshiping God. So Yahweh was and has always been a lie. It is not God. It is not the Elohim. It was a creation of the Babylonian, Persian, Greek, and Roman empires. Those empires are the heads of the beast. They created that false god Yahweh. And it is so easy to see, especially when you read in these texts, that Yahweh was demanding money from the Israelites. It's so easy to see that that was the empire taking taxes from the Israelites, the Hebrews, and telling them that they were giving it to God. Again, it's not me saying it. It's the Bible saying it. That God is fiction. The true creators of the earth are the Elohim. Genesis 1 tells us that. Yahweh is the lie that was inserted into the texts. Hosea tells us that there are people who are walking in the ways of the Lord, and there are others who are worshiping the beast, thinking they are worshiping God. So some people may be using the name Yahweh while they are walking in the ways of the true God. But there are other people who are worshiping that same name who are not walking in the ways of the true God. They're committing evil acts. So it's not the name that matters. Because remember, Jesus said in Revelation, it says in the book of Revelation that no one knows his name. Isn't that interesting that so many people are out there saying you must use the correct name in order to get in heaven? Yet the Bible itself tells us that no one knows the name. The beast corrupted the books. That's why the true message is in the codes that Gabriel told us would not be understood until the end time. They're not difficult codes. I'm not talking about numbers or, or any of this other stuff that you have to have special software for. No, it's just logical codes, phrases, words and phrases that anybody can put together. Although it does say that those who worship the beast will not be able to put it together. It does say that. Gabriel did tell us that. But it's, it's clearly there. But it cannot be understood until the end time. So Amos tells us that Yahweh is the one who changed the time of Wormwood. In other words, the beast, the world empire, is the one who changed the time of Wormwood. So the government is lying to us about when the meteorite is going to hit. So don't trust what they say about when it's due or when this next asteroid might be a danger. They're lying. The Bible is telling you they are lying about the time. So when they say 2030 or 2040, don't believe it. They're lying. So these scriptures are telling us that there is a red star out there somewhere that cannot be seen with the human eye that passes the constellation Orion, the constellation Taurus, where the seven stars are, the Pleiades, the constellation of the Bear, and the star Arcturus, which is in the Boots constellation. And it says that star will cast a burning stone to earth with its tail, which will end civilization as we know it. And again, this does match what many scientists have been postulating in recent years, that there is an undiscovered planet or dwarf star that is in the outer solar system that is pushing through the Kuiper belt and dislodging comets and asteroids into the inner solar system. The only difference between what the Bible says and what those scientists are saying is that the Bible says there is no doubt about whether it will hit us. The stone, it says, will absolutely hit the earth and kill the beast at a time when the worshipers of the beast will not expect it. 
and the Bible has a better track record than all of the scientists put together. For more information, you can watch the playlist Bible's Countdown to the Meteorite and Rescue linked here. Again, I am working on the subtitles in those videos, so if one of them doesn't have the language that you need right now, check back periodically, and hopefully I will have all those videos translated in the next couple of months. Thank you so much to those who make this work possible. If you'd like to offer support, check out the description below or indigoflower.net. I hope you're doing well, and I will talk to you next week.